So Andy was sat here um, in the office at Christmas time um, uh, at the end of 2012, which has been one hell of a, an eventful year. Um, but just take us back and, and, and talk me through your thoughts about what's gone on in the year. You know, back in back in May we set up uh, the website. We launched the website, having done considerable amounts of work to uh, to get things up and running. Um, so just just tell me how you think the year's gone, basically, and what and, and what we've done and and where we're going. Uh, like I said, the the, uh, the website uh, was set in May. We were, we were um, we were keen to get that up there and out there, and, and that's what we did. Uh, and we said that at the time we're just going to have to keep up with with what's going on. So uh, absolutely delighted with the start that we've got. You know, we remember sitting around a table early on and saying that we needed. A thousand people on Twitter, and then two thousand people, and that has grown considerably over the last few months, and we're up to something like thirty-two thousand now. So, um, on all aspects, the the fundraising, the money's starting to come in now in big chunks, which is great. Uh, like you said, Twitter is, is up to thirty-two thousand. Facebook is flying at around fifteen thousand. So, I think we're touching this on all bases. You know, we're, we've had meetings with Andy Burnham. We've been down to the House of Commons. Um, uh, we've, we've, we've met with researchers, so over the whole spectrum, I think we're pleased with how everything has gone. So it, it, it's been a massive learning curve, hasn't it? And I think uh, for no one, no one more so than, than yourself, you know, in terms of understanding, um, you know, the, the, the problem that you're facing, um, what the solutions are, uh, that there are no treatments, never mind a cure. Uh, and it's about funding the research into finding those treatments and the cure. Um, I think you've 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 gone along this path and 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 picked up knowledge and driven things forward to a point where um, we we need to educate people about how we're going about doing this. This isn't a, a short term fix, is it? It isn't something that that's going to stop. We've not got an end goal. Just explain a bit about how how the charities goals are set out what are we going to do we're constantly asked you know what is the figure that you need to sort this problem out and unfortunately it's not a it's not a situation like that this is a condition that's been haunting families you know since time began so um what we need to do now is continually fund research that, that's going into the uh, into the right places so um it's been a, a very steep learning curve uh we've looked at uh, numerous projects We've looked at the the business model that we've got because at the end of the day it is a business. We need to be able to generate money. Uh, nobody in the business uh, or the charity gets paid. It's all voluntary, but uh, we need to look at all aspects of this. Um, so what are we what are we what are we planning out in ne in the next year then? How, how do we go about this? So, are there some exciting things on the horizon? What, what, what yeah, there's there's exciting things concerning uh, concerning projects to look at. There's exciting things concerning um, you know fundraising events that we're doing. Um, you know we've been very focused this year on, on raising money. Uh, that has got to continue. The events that we have have got to be bigger and stronger than what we've had before. And hopefully events that people want to come to, uh, want people want to be a part of at a corporate level and at an individual level. So. Um, what we need to do is, is build on what we've done this year. You know, everyone's been blown away with the generosity of, of the people um, and the companies that have got behind us and backed us. But um, we've so much more to do. Um, you know, we've got to start to focus now, start to really sit down and, and spend this money wisely. At the end of the day, you know, we don't want to be the richest charity in the world with all the money in the bank. We've got to fund the right stuff and. Uh, I certainly don't want to waste anybody's money. It's all about um, getting the results. Um, so we'll listen to the top people around the world um, and see where that money needs to go to. So I'm right in saying then that, just to clarify on that, we, th there's a team that you've surrounded yourself with who will advise you on where the money raised should go. Is that correct? Is that how that works? Yeah, we've got what's called the SAV, which is a, a scientific advisory board, which uh, proposals will come into the charity that then reviewed by the SAB team who are researchers and, and highly experienced in this uh, condition uh, and they will review it and, and pick holes in, in, in what's put towards us but uh, you know I, I can't stress enough that it's not just a case of, of throwing this or scattering this money around and, and hoping and crossing fingers that we get results. This really has got to be 
um, you know, the right research. And that's why up to now, you know, as Christmas, so after six, seven months of, uh, of the charity moving forward, we've not yet made uh, one investment. So uh, certainly the, when we come to the new year, uh, we'll look at the bank account, we'll, we'll go and sit down with more researchers again, we'll, sit, we'll continue to um, have the, the meetings with, uh, with Andy Burnham um, and look at how we can best uh, spend you know, people's hard earned money. So uh, we're looking for results, Jack is, uh, is approaching five years old, this year has, has flown um, and uh, you know, what we're looking to do is keep Jack on his feet which means that uh, you know, this, these medicines have got to move quicker than they've moved before. Um, so we're fighting this from, from a number of angles and, and we're going to make sure that, um, or certainly try our, our hardest, that, um, you know, that these things move forward quickly. Jack stays on his feet and has a life that's worth, worth living along with, uh, with all the other children as well. Absolutely. I think that, that's the key, isn't it? That this is, it may be called joining Jack, but this is about everyone who is affected by Duchenne muscular dystrophy ac across the world and the research is I in looking uh, to, to cure for everyone. Um, just give us an idea in terms of, for example, the a typical cost of, 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 a, of a research string because what that will do is give people an idea of just how, 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 how quickly money can run out. Uh, we're talking enormous amounts of money, it's sums of money that people just won't be able to comprehend as we couldn't comprehend when we first heard about it. But uh, to give you two examples, something called Exxon Skipping, uh, which was just a kind of um, idea uh, 10 years ago, £150,000 was put into that and now it's become a multi-million pound um, kind of scenario where uh, they're looking into certain specific mutations within the gene and it's looking very, very promising, but unfortunately that kind of research has, has kind of divided the uh, the community. But there's many other things that are that are looking uh, looking promising, uh, the upregulation of eutrophin, uh, and trials, you know, kind of 20, 30, 50, 100 million pound uh, to get a trial done. So um, that's obviously when you need the pharmaceutical companies to step in and, and take care of these things. But we need to get the things moving. We need to look yeah. at medicines that are that are potentially out there at the moment that have been on the shelf for other conditions and not really, uh, you know, become what they wanted to become, but could be very useful for Duchenne. And we've also got to look at cutting edge stuff like the exon skipping and like the upregulation of eutrophin. So um, never before has, has as much research gone into this condition. Uh, rare, rare diseases now are starting to take, uh, you know, a bit of. Um, credit from the pharmaceutical companies and uh, there's some real hope that this generation of children now will have a completely different path than those that have gone before them. That's fantastic and I think um, certainly to kind of look back over the seven, eight months that we've been uh, campaigning and working hard, there's got to be some thanks to some of the huge amounts of contribution made by celebrities, uh, friends of yours who are able to raise awareness through Twitter, through these social media channels where they can engage and collaborate with people and, and allow people to feel involved. I think what we've found is that you know these social networks are, are a place for everyone to feel involved and, and, and help out however they can. So the pound on the street is, co is connected to the, the corporate pound via these these celebrity connections and the people who we've got on board, do, you know, can, can you talk a bit about that? I mean, what that will do is hopefully skyrocket things for, for every year as we as we consolidate year on year. I think it's just you look at a simple formula and it's it's kind of population and numbers equals kind of corporate interest. Corporate interest again reels out into to, to, to pound notes and pound notes then goes into research and research to hopefully a treatment and a treatment to a cure that's the kind of equation that I put in front of myself every day and have a look at that but uh, yeah we've had we've had enormous support from from the likes of Bradley Wiggins, Jason Robinson, Lucy Jo Hudson you know the list goes on um, but what really matters is that the people uh, certainly in this town and, 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 and that's now spread out to to people that have just been throwing pounds in buckets and that's been enormous for, for us and I think that's what really matters. People keep kind of patting us on the back and saying, oh, aren't your team doing a great job? But 
you know, they are doing a great job. There's some incredible people who sat around the table. Um, and a big thank you to all of those. But the people on the streets that don't have to get involved with this, the people on the streets that can walk away from it because they've got their own problems, uh, and they've not done. They've all kind of come forward, they've stepped forward and said, we want to be a part of this. We understand the, the, the desperation and, and uh, you know, the heartache that you're going through and we want to help you. And I think that... Um, you know that's 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 the big thing about it. There's, there's no patting on the back for us. It, it's all about everybody else coming together and making this happen. So, the success of where we are now is uh, is down to everybody. Um, you know, throwing those pounds in those buckets, buying the wristbands, buying the pin badges, uh, buying the rugby jerseys. So, um, you know that awareness hopefully will continue. I don't want people to get sick of us. Um, like I say, we're going to be around here for five, ten, fifteen, twenty years time. Uh, as long as it takes um, and it's going to take an awful lot of money but hopefully we can give something back from that and hopefully our events our special events that people want to be involved with like the Dubai trip that we've just had um, you know we came away from that thinking we, we, we've absolutely nailed it and I think that every event that we do has to replicate that and uh, we, we need to grow what, like I say what people want to be involved with and exciting times ahead certainly locally next year with some events planned that um are going to be exciting, collaborative, pulling the community in, uh, replicating that hopefully throughout the northwest and beyond. Uh, certainly across the Pennines, we've had uh, with our friends over in Yorkshire and in the rugby league community some real uh, support, and and that will spread further. Um, I I've, I think that you, you've got some really exciting times ahead. I'm sure you do too. Um, but have you a message just in general now to? to kind of wind things up for 2012, Andy? Uh, we're going to take a week off now for Christmas. It's the first time that we've kind of, you know, really want to settle back and put the Christmas tree up and do the normal family things. But, yeah, Rugby League has, has, has given us that opportunity. Uh, you know, having played for 13 years professional sports, I think I've met some, some amazing people. I think Rugby League is a, an incredible sport. And, uh, you know, that gives us the, the, the peg up to then start approaching more and more people. Um, like you say, we've, we we don't want to box ourselves into a corner and, be, and become a Wigan charity because of the magnitude of the problem. We've got to look nationally and then we've got to look internationally. That's why we did actually go out to Dubai. Uh, we're looking at other venues to play in other tournaments. Um, but this isn't just about rugby. It's as good as the Rugby League family is and, and that's the quote or the hashtag that everybody has, the Rugby League family. Uh, we need to spread this out into other sports. Sport is a great vehicle for... Uh, sending messages out and, and people sticking together and I think that um, we've got to continue to build uh, we will continue to build and uh, I've said right from the beginning we're going to be one of the biggest charities in the world and we're going to make a difference along with other Duchenne charities around the world uh, we're going to join hands we're going to bring everybody together we're going to have collaboration which is a big word that I'm going to keep using uh, and hopefully make a big difference so thanks again to everybody and um, you know let's keep building